Good evening, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Inside the Picks. And boy, we got a great show tonight. And I'll tell you what, we also have a great, we have a great addition, a guy that was on this show for a while, took a little bit of a break, and now we've got him back, and he's going to be writing the forward of my next book when I get around to do it. His name is Steve Ballastrey. Welcome back to the big show. Thanks for inviting me back. Um, man, I leave for two minutes. You got this great new intro thing going on. It's like, you guys are just, you're happening. We're trying to graduate a little bit. You know, why don't you let the audience know who you represent? I know you cover the Patriots, but, you know, for those individuals watching for the first time, as well as your new teammates, you know, including yeah, one uh, one now. Yeah, I, I, I write for PatsFans.com. This is my 13th season writing for them. Um, and uh, it's been quite the ride for me. I mean, you know, we went through all the the good years and now we're taking a step back, a big step back. Yeah, he, he's the guy that had to deal with the Belichick one-liners or now the guys in the media. Isn't that amazing? He's one of us. Scary thought. <laughs> so, but yeah, the, the Belichick years were actually fun for me. I, I enjoyed trying to read the tea leaves, you know. <laughs> uh, and and some of his one-liners, they used to crack me up. I can only imagine. But by the way, hello, Daniel Berry, Sports Highlights. Welcome back to the big show here. Our Steve is back. All right, let's go over the topics, and I'll introduce the rest of the crew. We're going to talk about Malik Willis. A few of these people thought I was wrong when I thought he'd be a good addition to the Packers. So I figure I'll revisit this one. Not that I know a lot about football, but I'm not, not ignorant about it either. We're going to talk about Brett Favre, unfortunate news about him today. We're going to talk about a game, the Miami Hurricanes. Again, Xavier Restrepo and Cam Ward have a nice little clip that we're going to play for you. In addition to Andy Dalton, Bryce Young, uh, Miami Dolphins quarterback situation, because it is rough. And we're going to talk about the United Football League and Coach Bono. We get to go back to Florida State, don't we? Our right. favorite Florida State guy. If you've never heard a rant before from a guy like this, guess what? He, you know, if there's a good Florida State rant, I'm going to make sure Coach Bono entertains you by saying what he thinks. And let me tell you, he's come a long way in the broadcasting business, a far cry from the coaching business, away from his days with the Rams. He's Lions, gone to the dark know. side now. Yeah, I have, yeah. Totally have come to the dark side. <laughs> yeah, he, well, he, he made a lot of progress, Steve. Let me tell you this, guy. So, all right, to the left of me, Bo Crouch. Football talk with Bo is back. Thanks for having me on, guys. You're welcome, Mel Farr, Jr. What's going on, folks? Us. Coach Bono. Good to see everybody. Good to see you, too. All right, let's get right to it. We're going to revisit the Malik Willis situation. He's now 2-0 and in place of Jordan Love. Coach Matt LaFleur says, I cannot articulate the job he's done in a short period of time. People can't find fathom that I promise you, that I promise you. So here's the thing. Let's talk about the tail of the tape when we talk about Malik Willis compared to Will Levis. For Malik Willis, he got 275 yards, two touchdowns, and – no turnovers, okay. Quarterback rating of 120.9, and of course, a win. Okay, tail of the tape with them. Let's go to Will Levis. Total yard 272, total touchdowns two, no problem. Turnovers three, that is a problem. Quarterback rating 92.8, and guess what? He lost. So, you know, coach, you know, I remember that you weren't so excited about this move when I <clears> talked <throat> about it, were you? What do you think about it now? Well, <laughs> what do you mean I wasn't excited about it? Which part of it? Well, the part that you thought. I, I never said that Malik Willis was going to be a miracle worker. I always thought he was going to get a fresh start in Green Bay. I don't know how it was going to work out. Yeah. But he never got a chance. I know. And listen, I'm not put, throwing you under know, the bus. There wasn't. I didn't have a body of work to look at. I just didn't think. I, I will say this. I, I'm shocked. Not shocked, but pleasantly surprised at how he's performed. Um, you know, Good teams can plug and play players and still win ball games. And when one of those players is the quarterback, uh, I think you have to give a lot of credit to Matt LaFleur and his offensive staff and the scouting staff for recognizing that not only the talent that the kid possesses, but them putting a plan together to, to highlight those talents, talents and 
you know, letting him kind of play within himself and stay within his game. They're not, they're not asking him to do, uh, to be Jordan Love, and they're not asking him to do Jordan Love things, you know. So they've kind of uh, catered that offense to him or, you know, modified it around him, and it's working because they have enough solid pieces. So uh, I think that, I think that um, in my mind, when I look at Green Bay and just how they're playing across the board, that kind of that boosts their stock in my mind. Yeah, and I'm kidding with you too. You know how much I love you, anyways, Coach. But when I saw Malik Willis was doing well, all he had to do with Green Bay is be a game manager, win some football games. That's basically it. And not like you're asking the guy to break major records. Just go out there, hold down the fort, so that. Jordan Love can take over. Well, he, he's a, you know, he's made some plays with his legs, you know what yeah. I mean? So that's kind of, they can ride that for a short period of time, which is what you ideally want when it, when it comes to the quarterback position to, you know, give Jordan time to heal up and get him back in there. And this will only help them down the road, you know, because have the kid getting game experience and then having success with him running the offense. Yeah. All right, Mel. Yeah, I mean, I didn't see it coming either. I didn't have a whole, a lot of body of work that was good. Good. I mean, I've watched the kid play in high school, uh, watched them do the spectacular in college. Uh, when you get the highlights, and then what I saw of him playing with the Titans wasn't very good. Uh, he was a guy that was, you know, looked like he didn't really see the field. And the first thing that he would do when he would get in trouble is he would take off and run and you utilize his athletic ability. I was. I was extremely surprised uh, at how well he played and, and happy for him. And it just goes to show you that sometimes you just got to be in the right place. And obviously, you know, Tennessee just wasn't the right place for him for whatever reason. It wasn't the right fit. Mm -hmm. And like Coach said, you have to give their coaching staff a, a lot of credit for having a game plan for him and having him prepared and being able to go out there and execute it. And then the kid, you know, you have to take your hat off to him as well. Uh, with all the adversity that he faced the year before, and with obviously, you know, Tennessee giving up on him, you know, having an opportunity to to come back, you know, it's very rare that a player uh, that soon has an opportunity to come back and play against a team that, that that basically gave up on him, and he went out there and performed extremely well. So you have to take your hat off to the kid because, you know, whatever coaching he's been getting, he's been receiving it, and you know, whatever he's been, whatever he was learning in the film room, uh, he took it out there and he was able to, you know. Put it on, put it on the practice field, and then obviously uh, put it out there on film as well in the game. So but you got to be really excited for the player. But I, like, like coach, I didn't see it coming. I really didn't, just based on the the small body of work that I saw while he was at Tennessee. Okay, we'll turn it over to Bo. Yeah, I mean, obviously you you're excited for the kid because he's able to you know kind of go out and showcase some of the things that he can do. But at the same time. He beat the Colts and the Titans. So, you know, we could probably pump the brakes on being, you know, MVP candidate here. Like, let, let's wait till we see him play a good defense because neither one of those teams are known for their pass rush. And that Green Bay offensive line is pretty solid, right? So against a bad pass rush, yeah, if he has time, sure. I, I would hope that anybody that made it to the NFL – can be pretty effective at quarterback. So when uh, when they go up against the Vikings, that look like a they have a very real defense. Uh, I, I think that'll be a little more telling of what it is he can really get done, uh, because then he has you know some more solid defenses ahead of him. Um, again, it was just the the two game sample size that we saw with him. Obviously, it looked great, statistically awesome. Um, but wasn't exactly going against tough teams either. Well, you didn't come into the season with the guy either. You made a last, uh, you made a move, you know, toward the end sure. of training. Camp, but, I mean, so. we, we watched we watched Baker do it on three days. With the we watched Dobbs right. do it on four days with the Vikings. So I mean, right. it's not that's not really unprecedented. Okay. Fair. All right, Steve. Yeah, uh, like everyone else, I I was surprised by it because like everyone else with the limited sample size, I didn't think he performed very well last year, but you have to take your hat off to him, the work he's put in. And I think uh, like the coach said, you have to really credit the coaches because, you know, they've played to this kid's strengths. 
They haven't asked him to do things he's not able to do. And I loved his his comment after the game when he was asked about, you know, did this mean anything special to you going against the team that you were with last year? And he said uh, something to the effect of, they paid my salary every week last year. <laughs> so I have no problems with that team whatsoever. And I like that attitude. I mean, you know, he got a he got a chance, another shot to shine, and he's been doing it. And yeah, the defenses he's faced haven't been that great. But I think even Matt LaFleur and his coaching staff have to be super pleased with what they've got out of him this up to this point. Yeah, and you know that you think about Malik Willis, it's only going to get better the longer he's there. Even when he finally holds a clipboard, it won't matter if you get the Packers two, three, four wins until Jordan Love comes back. To me, that says a lot right there. What do you expect out of your backup quarterback? Somebody that can definitely fill in capably until their starter comes back. We could sit here and go over the time of history when we've had Earl Morrow. I, I know Steve remembers that over Bob Greasy. <laughs> Hey, uh, Scott, can I can I take a moment and like can I just fact check Bo real quick? Sure. Because, yeah. What right? do we got? So you're you're half right on your comment with him going against in, you know low level defense and that the the Colts are ranked right now 31st in total defense. However, the Tennessee Titans are fifth in total defense right now. Oh so, really? No. So, so I, I was actually specifically calling out the pass rush. So it, it, neither team has a great pass rush. Uh, um, that would be, yeah, they're about middle of the road. I think exactly. the Titans are right now in a ranked, uh, they're actually 15th in uh, sacks per pass play and the, the Colts are 18th. So yeah, well, it, not, definitely not an elite pass rush. No, and that's all I was saying is, you know, he was going against teams that didn't have a great pass rush. Whereas this coming weekend, the Vikings are yes. the Vikings are pretty elite right now. <laughs> yeah, they're they're they are playing good football. Hey, listen, right now the only thing I'll say about Malik Willis, really, I think we all agree on it. He's a feel good story. Oh, yeah. really Absolutely. So that said, let's talk about is, is there any chance that Jordan Love makes it back this week? Have you heard anything, Bo? It, it doesn't sound like it. Uh it sounds like he is around the facility, but it doesn't sound like he's effectively going to be getting the start this week. Gotcha. At least from what I've heard. Because this is a huge game for both both teams this week in the division. Both of them pretty high. Now, if he does come back and they lose and they're 2-2 two and two, and Love is 0-2 oh and Malik <laughs> is 2-0, oh, <laughs> just, just for shows like this, that could be hilarious. <laughs> yeah. Well, Remember, we do have a group chat, so anybody that wants to come up with ideas, they have a free <laughs> opportunity to do it, and I have no problem writing them down I'm, on I'm, paper. I'm so sorry, I did, I'm sorry, uh, Scott. I just I, I had to call Bo. No, there's no, there's no. No, no, no. no. And, 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 there and is, wait, 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 wait. It's why there, I didn't say total defense. I specifically said the pass rush. Yes, there did. is no such thing as an apology on this show. Because we are family. Okay, period. Okay. So, As know, John Wayne know. once said, okay. don't apologize. It's a sign of weakness. <laughs> there you go. All right, see. But and no, then you wonder, I mean, if I get something wrong, I, I want to know, obviously. Yeah, listen, I'll own it, too. I don't care. I'll own oh, it, too. About, now, who's the only one that I won't own it to? Okay, was it Dan Marino? Who was the other one that I blew a gas? I mean, oh, that one was Herm Edwards. Little, that was huh? a little over Herm the Herm Edwards. Herman Edwards, there you go. Yes. That gets me set off here right now. Herman <laughs> Edwards, I can't stand this guy. That's and, what gets it, me going. And in both cases, it's a little over the top, I think. <laughs> like, like neither one of those guys are that bad. <laughs> but I hate Herman Edwards. Steve, you weren't around when I went ballistic that night. No, I, I, I didn't know you felt that way about Herman. Oh, yeah, we played to win the game. Yeah, give me a break, sick of head. He never even knew that Chuck Hugh died on the field and he saw that never heard of such a thing. And then I really, I'll tell you what, not only did we play to win the game, I played the roasted clown. Okay. And then of course, all he did was screw up Arizona state, but that was getting me started there. Cause I know Mel has a heart out. We got to get to as much as we can, but yeah, all it takes on this show, when it comes to football is Herman Edwards. 
on baseball. All it takes if you ever see a baseball show, Barry Bonds. Okay, then there you go. And I'm sure there's other things too, but there you go. All right. Let's stay in Green Bay. All right, there you go. I'm starting to sound like Brent Lutford, I think. I don't know. It's my eye was going up, though. Uh, unfortunate news today that we found out about. Brett Favre, 54, has been diagnosed with Parkinson's disease. Ouch. All right, Steve, what are your thoughts about Brett Favre? Yeah, I mean, just forgetting about his uh, issues of the past few years, you hate seeing that. Um because uh, my my mom died of Parkinson's disease, and it really robs you of who you are as a person. And I, I wouldn't wish that on anybody. And I, I hate hearing that uh, about Brett Favre. He's always been one of those larger-than-life characters. Um, but, um, you know, that I, I hate, you know, these diseases that – you know, cancer, as bad as cancer is, you're still who you are, even when you waste away. Right. But, uh, you know, uh, as you know, Scott, uh, my wife and I took care of her parents who right. were both ill until they both passed away here at our home. And it's the same thing. It, it, you, they were robbed of who they were at the end. And I just absolutely hate hearing that. Well, we've got some activity in the chat room, Steve. That's another thing that's changed about this show. Good evening, Blows. Okay, he's on there. Joshua Dorr, one of our active chatters. Hi, Joshua. How are you doing? I'm going to introduce you to Steve. Tanya Scotese. Let me tell you something about this woman here. She's a real big LinkedIn individual. She's going to be on a future edition of the Motor City Mad Mouth show. And she lives on LinkedIn. And she's obviously works in the funeral business and teaches a class. Tanya is one of the most classiest people I have ever seen. She's in my Wednesday networking group. Tanya, thank you so much for coming on. I am so excited that you picked this show to come on because I got my, I have the network's best here. I got Bo, I got Steve, I got Coach Bono, and I got Mel. And Josh Rador, this is old Steve. Steve, don't get any better than this. He's also a military guy. So where was I at? Uh, I don't remember what I was saying, but then again, I got enough. Talking about Favre. Yeah, Fred yeah. Favre. That's going yeah, good. Talking, oh, I'm having a lot. Yeah, everything's going great. Look at that. Unbelievable. See, this chat room is a beautiful thing. Yeah, Brett Favre to me is a guy that played in so many consecutive games. So, you know, he owns a record that nobody will ever break. You know, I've always thought Brett Favre was one of my all time favorite quarterbacks, if no for other reason. He played in so many games in a row and he went to work. But that's a th and now unfortunately he has this disease. All right, coach, I'm going to turn it over to you. Yeah, I mean, this one hits home for me because I consider Brett a, a friend. I mean, I had an opportunity to uh, work with him for three years in Green Bay. And, you know, the first thing that kind of pops into my mind is, you know, how much did uh, football, if if it did or, or and if it does, how much did, you know, does that have an effect on the, you know, the generation or acceleration of that disease? You know, so, I mean, you have to, we have to, we know that the league's done a lot to protect players in general. Uh, we've done a lot to protect the, the quarterbacks. Uh, but, you know, Brett wasn't the beneficiary of a lot of those rules. I mean, he played when those guys were, you know, they were fair game, anything and everything goes, you know, and, um, guys that played in that era and played that position, and for, especially him, for someone that played for as long as he did and not ever miss a game, uh, you know, he he did. It's not like he was immune to it. He took some horrific shots. You know, I'm, I saw a few of them. He was just, uh, you know, had the toughness and the makeup and maybe a little bit of luck that uh, it never knocked him out. You know, like kept kept him from playing a game, but um, definitely, you know, thoughts and prayers for him. All right, Joshua Dora has an easy question for you, Bo. One of the easiest ones you're ever going to see. How's it going? Yeah, no, I, I I responded to him when he when it popped up. Yeah, going oh, well, good, there's, Josh. There's my Parkinson's disease. No, I'm not kidding around about this. Although I have had two MRIs relating to my head injuries and we're going to wait to find out the results but you know my first encounter with parkinson's disease believe it or not was when i interviewed all-time heavyweight champion muhammad ali 
down in North Miami Beach at Allen Park, and I spent a week with the champ. That was unbelievable. It was sad, but you know what? That's when you want to admit that a picture is worth a thousand words, and I got one with Muhammad with his fist right under my jaw. He wouldn't know had Parkinson's disease. <laughs> he probably thought my jaw got broken instead. Tanya, my pleasure. You know what? I love this woman. She's a great person in the group. Everybody ever gets to know this lady. You're better because of it. All right, Mel. Yeah, <clears throat> you know, I, when I saw it, obviously it's very unfortunate. You know, Brett was one of my favorite players watching because you understand, you know, somebody as a fan of the game, you understand the passion that he played with and, you know, how much he loved the game. He, you know, he was like a kid out there playing. And, you know, it seemed like if, you know, if he didn't get paid anything, uh, he'd still be out there playing football. Um, you know, I'm, I'm going to leave it at that. I'm not going to you know, put any conspiracy theories out there because, God forbid, Brett is listening and I end up with a lawsuit and I can't afford any defamation lawsuits, but it is, it is an unfortunate, um, you know, when, when I heard about it, um, you know, I thought it was very, you know, it's, it's unfortunate because we know what that looks like. Now there are medicines out there. There's treatments out there. We know that Ali was not one that, you know, he wasn't taking the medicines that, that could have helped him with the shakes. But again, you know, you look at somebody like Michael J. Fox and how, how it is, you know, really, right. it really significantly, changed his life and altered his life. But, uh, you know, you just hope for the best for me and, and pray for him and pray for his family. All right, you know, let's go to the chat room. Tanya's got some good information. I think that you guys address it. Cancer patients can make choices. Cognitive decline is a whole different process. I managed an oncology office for four plus years. So there you go. Now, I, I should also add that Mel and Coach Bono had an opportunity to come on on separate shows with Jennifer Cobb we all know the former St. Louis Rams cheerleader who's been, you know, raising money against Parkinson's disease. And maybe one of these days, Bo, I'll get you <clears> one <throat> with Jen. Jen's a sweetheart. I remember we all had a good time, right, Mel and Coach Pano? She's an yes, unbelievable person, and she does some great work. So, all right. So, Bo, some of your thoughts on Brett Favre. Yeah, I mean, I, obviously, it, it's sad to see, um, you know, hopefully, you know, it – Fortunately, as technology continues to go, um, you know, hopefully there's more and more treatments to make it, you know, a slower decline, if nothing else. Obviously, there's no cures for it or anything like that. And, yeah, I mean, I, I loved watching Brett, um, you know, fantastic player, loved the way that he played, right? I mean, it was, it was always electric. I mean, you were either going to win or you were going to lose, but it was all going to be on his arm. And, uh, you know, so it was, it was always a ton of fun to watch. Uh, you know, he never played for my favorite team, but he was a player that you enjoyed. Um, so th this is something you never want to see. And it doesn't matter if it's a, uh, you know, a, an athlete or just somebody down the street like that. This is one of those that you you wish nobody got. Well, Candy, speaking on behalf of the South Florida Tribune, the gunslinger. There yep, you go. There's no doubt. So, so with that said, I guess we can all agree that every quarterback should have a great receiver, right? A good top notch receiver. Right? Yep. Go to you guys. It doesn't hurt. All right. Well, guess what? Cam Ward got one. Here's a guy, you know, watch Miami Clobber, my alma mater, USF, 50 to 15. Oh, you know, I mean, I, I guess I wasn't going to lose either way. But, he, but you know what? When you see Cam Ward, it's a treat. And Xavier Restrepo is a guy I've spoken to often before. So, you know what we're going to do? Cam Ward's numbers up to this point are 89 for 123, 1,439 yards, 14 touchdowns against two interceptions. If that isn't good enough, well, it is good enough. The favorite receiver is a guy by the name of Xavier Restrepo. 20 receptions, 362 yards, five touchdowns, 18.1 average. But you know what the best part about it is? Xavier Restrepo has gone ahead and caught a touchdown pass in every game, and he had two and one. Candy, roll the tape. Hey, Cam, I know the first three games, you and Xavier Restrepo have been good friends. You've connected on touchdowns every game. So what, what, how good, well is your chemistry developing with Xavier Restrepo? You guys seem to hit the end zone once a game at least. He's real good, uh, especially where we started from in the spring. Uh, even through fall camp, me and him had some bad days together, just not seeing the field. Uh, but we honed in on that. And every time we watch tape, he's always there. He's the first one there. Uh, whether we watch it two times a day or three times a day. So, you know, his schedule, his schedule is hard, but he always finds time to do it. And I think that's why I'm showing off for him on the field. And, you know, he just knows, like, the spaces where we need to get to, whether it's man, whether it's zone. Like the, the one we ran today, it was zone, and he just drops stuff. We worked out of practice every day. So I think all the practice stuff paying off, and that's why he's doing so good. 
All right, Bo, what are your thoughts about my question towards Cam Ward? What, what was the question itself? Well, talking about his favorite target, Xavier Restrepo, and what it means to be able to have the constant continuity that he has working with him on a regular basis. I mean, reps matter, right? I, that, that's one of the things he was talking about in your question there was, you know, just the amount that they're doing reps during practice. And, I mean, when it comes to game time chemistry, nothing beats a lot of reps in practice. Steve? Yeah, uh, from what I've watched of the, that kid, I mean, he is pretty dynamic. And I was excited to see, you know, what he was doing on the field. I obviously want to see more of it. I, I haven't caught many uh, of Miami's games. So uh, hopefully we'll see them on TV more and more. And, uh, you know, I think that kid has a bright future on Sunday. Coach Bono. Well, you know, I'm I'm really impressed with Cam Ward and his answer. Um, you know, I think that's the type of attitude and leadership. You know, like he he was mentioning on the fact that, you know, uh, Xavier's schedule is busy, but we always find time to do it. Right. That's the thing kind of resonated with me, and, and to me, Cam's the one that's initiating this. He's the catalyst for it. He's the quarterback. And, you know, they're developing that chemistry. But the testament and the authenticity of his answer, to me, um, it speaks a lot for him, which, you know, I never heard him speak. So I didn't really know a whole lot about him. But that's, uh, you know, he has a very, very favorable uh, uh, impression in my book for, you know, for me. And I think, you know, he needs to continue to show out and, you know, preach, you know, walk the walk. Uh, or, you know, walk the walk exactly. And, and uh, he does have a bright future. I agree. That's what yours truly does on the weekend, along with the photographer, videographer, Candy Epling. All right, Mel, your thoughts about my conversation with Cam Ward. Yeah, I've been impressed with the kid. You know, this is this is his third stop. I really never, um, to be honest with you, I never seen him play. You know, I know he was at a small school, Incarnate Word. Um, mm -hmm. He transferred to Washington State, and then right. you know, I think he was like the number one guy in the portal or something like that. You know, Cammy was able was able to grab him, I mean, number one quarterback in the portal, and so I really, you know, I was kind of, you know, cause, you know I, I, I like Miami, and I think uh, college football is, is better when Miami is relevant, and so I was kind of anxious, you know, kind of did some reading up and seeing who this guy is, and yeah, it was nice to hear him speak because I've never heard him speak before, and he gave a very detailed answer, a very well thought out answer. Preparation is key, you know, whether, you know, being able to recognize zone or man and understanding what you see and what you do when you see those types of situations. And I think you did a very good job of, of explaining that and explaining that that process uh, that has enabled those two to be on the same page. So I thought, I thought that was, you know, very, very impressed by the young man. Yeah, Mario Cristobal's done a really nice job being able to manage Cam Ward. I believe on Saturday, he was taken out with four minutes left. Otherwise, he never got past the third quarter because Miami, for all those of you that are seeing us for the first time, the first game that we ended up playing, we ended up beating Florida 41-17, to 56-9 to against Florida A&M University Rattlers, and Ball State got crushed 62 to nothing in USF, got put up a 50 spot against a pretty good defense, but 50 to 15. So there you have it. All right. Well, with that said and done, we're going to bring Candy Ebling for a quick station break. We'll be right back. You are listening to the South Florida Tribune YouTube channel. If you see that red subscribe button, hit it, like us, share us with all your friends and family, anybody that would enjoy this. If you like to listen to podcasts, we podcast as well. All of our audio goes to the wherever you get your podcasts. Monday nights, Fire Up Florida, we talk hockey. Then we talk baseball. Tuesday nights, obviously, we're talking football. Wednesday and Thursday nights, Sports Exchange and Fire Up, respectively. You never know what we're going to be talking about. Back in November, we published a book, Lessons from the Microphone, Tuning into the Enduring Wisdom of Visionary Leaders. It is written by your host, Scott Mort. Motor City Mad Mouth Morgan Roth, and it is available on Amazon, Barnes and Noble, 
Kindle, Apple, and Google Books. There is a link on our website, www.SouthFloridaTribune.com. There is also a link to our store where you can get merchandise. South Florida Tribune, a hat, a, let's see, a sweatshirt, a t-shirt, whatever you want, go check it out, as well as the whole website. Scott writes for us. I do pictures. Go check it out. Back to you, Scott. Thank you very much, Candy. And of course, if you want to follow us on Twitter, <laughs> slash X, you can do so at Tribune South. All right, onwards we go. How many people on this panel probably agreed that Bryce Young shouldn't have started in the first place, that Andy Dalton should have? We know Dave Canales obviously didn't waste any time making that change. And I know the guy that's grinning from here to here is Coach Bono. Coach Bono, have it, my man, because I know you're the one guy that was an advocate that Dalton should have started while Bryce Young sat on the bench. And I think a lot of us can agree that I think a rookie quarterback, if at all possible, should sit for one year. But you know what? I'm not stealing Coach Bono's thunder. Go ahead, Coach. Now, you know, and look, I, I think the kid was a really talented college player. And I just, you know, I hate seeing this happen. I mean, yeah. this started last year. I mean, there's right. no reason to think that just by changing the coach that this was going to change. He played, they played him too soon. Um, doesn't have enough uh, – other tools around them. And, you know, the, given the fact that, you know, Dalton is winning, not because he's a better quarterback, he's a more experienced quarterback. He's been in the fire. I mean, at this stage in his career, if it was up to physical skills, I mean, they're not even, you know, they're not even close to the same, but it's, 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 it's his experience, his, uh, his ability to process and make decisions and avoid bad, bad plays. That's, you know, that was good enough to lift them over the top to a win. You know, hopefully, hopefully Bryce can can sit and learn a little bit, calm down and uh, come back and hopefully fulfill, you know, uh, make everybody right about him. Because I do think he's an outstanding talent. Let's, let's talk about, about, let's talk about the, see these guys play so early and, and get ruined. Yeah, no, I'm with you. Let's pop the tail of the tape a little bit between Dalton and Bryce Young. Dalton's completed 70.3%. And obviously, Bryce Young, 55.4%. We obviously know that Dalton's want to know this year. Bryce, over the last 18 starts, is 2-16. and 16. Dalton had 319 yards. Bryce Young's had 245. Three touchdowns for Dalton. Unfortunately, Bryce didn't have any turnovers. For Dalton, no turnovers. Bryce Young has three, and the passer ratings are really large. Difference, 123.6 for Dalton and 44.1 for Right, so there you have the tail of the tape. I'll, with that said, Mel, take it from there. Um, I, you know, I was never really high on Bryce, you know, and, and I think it kind of, you know, with with Andy having the success that they that he had, uh, there is some stuff around there, and they, you know, they lost to. I mean, they beat a good football team, right, on Sunday. I mean, the Raiders came in there pretty hot and pretty high. Maybe they're a little overconfident. Maybe they were looking ahead of the schedule. I don't know what what they were doing, but uh, you know they 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 beat the Raiders solidly and uh, <clears throat> decisively. So you know, and you know you know remember the Red Rifle. I mean, if I'm not mistaken, he started his rookie year. Uh, I think he was right. a second round draft pick out of TCU or wherever Texas Tech right. he came from TCU, and uh, you know he was slinging it around the yard. I mean, he's <laughs> been very t- he's a very talented quarterback. And he didn't have much there in Cincinnati, you know, really. He didn't have a whole lot of help there in Cincinnati, but they had him. And, you know, he's a gunslinger. I mean, that's what he did in college, and, you know, that's what he did when he, when he was there in Cincinnati. So there's one thing that we know about him is he can throw the football. And I just think that, you know, yeah, it's always good if a uh, if a quarterback, a, a, a high draft pick quarterback can have an opportunity to sit. It's always good. But, you know, the way the draft is, you know, the best players end up one of the worst teams. And they're they're bad teams for a number of reasons. You know, organizationally they're bad, uh, coaching wise they may be bad, and then personnel wise they're, they're they're probably lacking. So there's a number of reasons why they were you know, why they had the opportunity to pick first. Now they're probably second guessing themselves as to who who they had, had you know who they decided to pick first because they they could have picked anybody. Right. And you know I thought C.J. Stroud believe you know I thought he was the best quarterback to be honest with you you know. I, I like a guy that's a little bit bigger. You know, it's hard for me, you know, the number one overall pick. Now, you know, they, they, you know, they'll try to say different things. Michael Vick wasn't that big. He was, he was six foot, but Michael Vick had 
an inc incredible speed. And he did things that we've never seen before. Bryce Young didn't do anything that I've never seen before. I mean, he won the Heisman Trophy, I guess. But you know, he had one of the most talented, if not the most talented, football team, and he couldn't lead them to a national championship. And a guy with far less talent was able to do it twice over at Georgia. So I, you know, I've had, you know, you know, the book has always been as far. I mean, I just, I, I, I just never really particularly hold on him. As a player, I just didn't see anything that just jumped out at me that says, "Yeah, this this is a franchise quarterback." I think the Panthers, you know, being the organization that they are, they, they made a bad decision with that pick, and and now they're paying for it. Yeah, yeah. In a few weeks, we're going to revisit that trade too. I just want to get all these quarterbacks in. But turn over to Paul. Yeah, I mean, I didn't like the fit when they drafted him. You know, it, it was a team that didn't have a lot of weapons. They gave up all those weapons to go get the guy. And, you know, the offensive line wasn't good. Like there was so many things wrong with that Panthers team. So having a guy that is a little bit of a finesse player, isn't a good match. Like, I, you know, like Mel said, I, I thought CJ would have been a far better fit there because he's just a bigger guy. And if you're not going to have an offensive line, you need a guy that should be able to take some hits. And the one thing about being undersized is you're going to take fewer of them. <laughs> like you, right. you may survive a few of them, but if you're getting hit by 300 pounders all the time, it's just not going to work out. And I mean, right. you know, obviously it's, it's unfortunate for the situation to have gone the way it has. Um, it compounds it to have Andy Dalton come in <laughs> and absolutely beat up on the Raiders. Uh, you know, it, that makes the situation a little bit worse optically anyway. So, um, you know, the, the Panthers did come out and say that they weren't interested in trading him, but, you know, we'll, we'll see if that remains true. All right. Well, Steve. Yeah. <clears throat> I think, you know, what happened to him is a cautionary tale. You know, we've seen it a lot of times. They throw these rookies into the fire and when they don't have a good supporting cast around him, you know, he has nothing to lean on. And, you know, we're having the same conversation up here. Uh, well, they are in New England. I'm down here in Florida now. But, you know, the, with with uh, Drake May and the reason, you know, Gerard Mayo said that they're going with Jacoby Brissett is he's a veteran, you know. And right now the offensive line is a sieve. Um, their best wide receiver, which they're – they don't have a great wide receiver room to begin with, but their best one is still on PUP. And, you know, there's, there's just too many issues right now to put a rookie in there. And, you know, the, I, I think you risk, you know, breaking the kid's confidence. Um, and I wonder if, if young will ever get over that, but uh, to your point, I think, you know, what Bo said, he wasn't maybe a great fit, but they were sold on him and they basically sold the farm to, to get him. Um, maybe that wasn't the greatest move on their part because then they weren't allowed to, well, they weren't able, I should say, to uh, surround him, especially with an offensive line. That's so important for a young quarterback because he has to have time to see the field. And, you know, as they age and progress, they start seeing it a lot better. You always hear the guy saying the game slowed down a little bit for me. But when you have an offensive line that's not allowing you to do that, like in New England at this point, you know, Jacoby Brissett's getting a lot of, uh, you know, uh, I'm not saying opposition, but, you know, he's getting a lot of bad press. And, you know, uh, like last Thursday night against the Jets, they were bringing pressure on him several times with multiple players in less than two seconds. There's not many quarterbacks that are out there that can handle that. Right. And, you know, I, I was watching the game and I was like, you know, I'm so glad they don't put Drake May in for this because right. I think he would have got crushed. Now they brought him in at garbage time to get his feet wet a little bit. And I don't have an issue with that. But I'm so glad they're not starting him. And I think what happened with Bryce Young is just one of those cautionary tales. 
You know, you should have gone with the veteran until you surround the young quarterback with the talent that he needs to be successful. Yeah, I can't really add a whole lot to what you guys said because I agree with you. Let him sit for a year. Pat Mahomes even sat for 15 games. Yep. But the one thing I can say about the Panthers situation, remember, their coach was Frank Reich. They thought that Frank Reich was the guy that was going to get turned this guy into the player that they thought they could be. And Frank, unfortunately, didn't even last an entire year in his first rodeo, but at least he's collecting some money. So that's. I mean, how how effective do you really think a rookie is going to be when you look at an organization mm. that over the last three years have had six head coaches? True. Like the math just doesn't work. No, it doesn't. And then you had Jim Caldwell as an offensive coach, too. And he's had some good success. He had Jim Caldwell, Frank Reich, and unfortunately, at the moment, it looks like Bryce Young's confidence is suffering a little bit. If the Panthers trade him, then they really look worse than they already look now because they gave up the farm to get him. Now, well, while we have Mel on here, I know he has to get going shortly, but I want to make sure he got on with this topic. The Miami Dolphins quarterback situation is down to their third option. <clears throat> we all know that two was on injured reserve although I think he'll be on there a lot longer. Skylar Thompson injured his ribs on Sunday versus your Seattle Seahawks, Bo. Okay. Tim Boyle replaced him. Uh, Tyler Huntley looks like the likely starter, according to coach Mike McDaniel. Boyle will back up to, uh, to me is in limbo. So, really, I guess the question is, what should Tua do? And what's going to happen with that Miami Dolphins situation quarterback-wise? You know what, Mel? I'm going to lead off with you this time. Well, you know, Cam is out there. Uh, you know, I don't know if he's still in shape or he's smoking cigars all the time and drinking wine, but, I mean, he, he's out there or whiskey, right. whatever he drinks. And Cap is still out there. You know, I mean, right now yeah. it's getting pretty desperate for them. Yeah. Uh, you know, two is going to be out. We know he's going to be out at least four weeks, maybe perhaps even longer. Um, Skyler, obviously, looks like he's had, had, has some type of rib injury, but I think that's something that, that they can manage, to be honest with you. You, know, you can put that little numbing stuff in there, and he, he can manage that. It'll be very sore after the games, but make sure he gets that, you know, get that needle in him before and, and, and before the game and at halftime. And I think that's something that he can manage. But still, uh, that, that's problematic uh, for them right now. Tyler Huntley, you know, we know he was a Pro Bowl player up there with, with Baltimore, uh, but you know, yeah, you know, he, he, you know, he, he is who he is. Uh, I know he was up in Cleveland uh, during the preseason. I don't know exactly where he was. I think it was on his practice squad, if I'm not mistaken, when they plucked him off the practice squad. So it will be interesting to see. Uh, he's got a couple more weeks in the building or a couple more days, rather, in the building, so he has an opportunity to learn the offense. So, you know, maybe they, they maybe they trot him out there. But I think they – don't they have uh, Doyle or somebody else there as well from – Yeah, Tim Boyle. Alliance? Yeah, I got Tim Boyle. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah Boyle, yeah. It so, was awful in Detroit. So. Right. So, you know, so they, they got problems over there. They got, they got yeah. problems. And uh, – you know, hopefully, you know, Tua will be okay. He's doing all the things that are necessary in order for him um, to, to get back if that's what he decides to do. If he doesn't decide to do it, which is nothing but the best. But, you know, they, they've got problems down there because that offense was centered around his skill set and what he's able to do and just being a point guard. That's all he was being is John Stockton. He was just delivering the ball, whether it was throwing the ball or whether it was just handing it off. He was just a point guard. So that's all they need somebody to do is be other point guard, but they had to be effective in – being able to being able to deliver the ball to to the to the weapons that they have. Well, Coach Bono's been adamant about this for the longest time on the planet. He want Tua to get that contract extension, give him another year. He had another year. They gave it to him anyway. So there comes a time, Coach, and you can just go out there and pat yourself on the back and say, "I told you so." Now you can say, "I told you so." But what are the Dolphins going to do with Tua out? I think he's be longer out longer than four weeks, anyways. I mean, they just put him on injured. On the injured list, I, I, you know, I think they need to go out and get a, get a quarterback. I mean, see if yeah. they trade for one or <clears> something. <throat> you know, that's. I mean, it's too early in the season. I mean, you know, it's it's only three. It's only week three. It, he, I mean, you you see what happened to the Jets last year, and right. and they obviously, you know, they arguably had a better option, maybe even than Dolphins do right now. Although. Right. They, that's highly debatable. Um, yeah, I mean, I, you know, I first guy that pops into my mind is Matt Jones. You know, maybe Jaguars might be interested in trading him. Uh, but there, there's got to be other people out. There's got to be somebody that someone's or, you know, willing to. Uh, I like Matt Jones. 
Huh? I like Mac Jones. I do too. I, I do too. Do you, do you think they'd actually trade him? Because Lawrence is playing bad enough. They they may give Mac a shot. No, that's a franchise. They just gave Lawrence a lot of money, though. Yeah, yeah, way too much money. Money. That, that's, they're, you know, they, <clears throat> that's too not late. what happened. No, yeah. definitely not. But <laughs> yeah, and that's why that's why they Trey might Lance, Trey Lance is there. I mean, Dallas doesn't need Trey Lance. Yeah. Yeah, that's and true. There's some familiarity there, you know, with uh right. with the coach being there with Trey Lance before. Yeah, I mean, that might be an option for him. I mean, I'm curious to see what Huntley can do in that offense. I actually thought they were gonna trot him out against the Seahawks. I thought they were gonna do that Baker Mayfield. Hey, we understand you just got in the room, but uh, you know, give it a shot. Because Skylar Thompson, we saw at the end of the game before, uh, and was underwhelming. And then Tim Boyle, we I mean, we we've, we've all seen Tim Boyle. So like I, I would have taken Huntley off of two days uh notice over the two guys that they had. <laughs> Interesting. All right, Coach Bono, you hit your piece out. Y'all y'all good? Yeah, I'm good. Yes, I'm good. We're going north of you to Steve Ballesteri. I know Mel has to leave in a few minutes, so we'll make sure he gets out at nine. But go ahead, Steve. What are your thoughts about the Dolphins' chaos at the quarterback position? You know, one of the things that's kind of surprised me is that knowing to his injury history and how you know serious those concussions were, that they didn't get a really solid backup quarterback. I mean – because you know he's like one hit away from, well, like he is right now, being out for several weeks. And I, I know that that can happen to any quarterback. But just no, his, no. I mean, he didn't get hit that hard. Let's be honest. No, and he, he initiated he fell into the guy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he initiated it too. I mean, I thought for sure he was going to slide, but that's another thing. But I, I'm actually surprised that they didn't go after. A really solid backup, right. because I I think you can sell it, you know, no, you know, to a, a good backup quarterback. Hey, come down here, because you might get a chance to play pretty often, given to his injury history. But they give and, these guys so much money, they just don't have money allocated where they can have a, you know, they can pay a quality backup. You know, they they can maybe be in a position to start somewhere else and get a little, little bit more money. So. That's hard. That's why you're always left with kind of, you know. The, 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 yeah, I mean that's true, the heap, but the scrap on the heap. Yeah, they're they're in a bad spot right now, um, because you know, like what was said, they've geared this offense around Tua and his, uh, you know, his ability. But I, I think they can adapt if they have a good guy back there. You know, they, they can adapt that offense because they have some really talented speed guys. And, uh, I mean, they don't need a world beater. They just need, as Mel said, they need a point guard to deliver the football. Right. You know, to the – I mean, there's no reason why they shouldn't still win a lot of football games with who they got. They just need a decent – quarterback in there i don't think thompson's the guy even before he got hurt and uh as you guys said you know boyle better than i do but right. uh, he, he's not impressive <laughs> no that's putting it lightly the, you know this quarterback situation reminds me of abbott costello really who's not who's the quarterback who's uh, you know that guy, never mind abbott costello everybody in this group here knows who abbott costello is. reality is i'm not one to give to advice about Retire, not to retire. He's trying to get medical opinions to see what he can do. But, you know, maybe Tua ought to think about what happened with Brett Favre today because that should be a message to everybody playing that position. And we've talked about it many times. Tua's only had one injury-free season. That's it. Dating back to Alabama, now once again, he's on the show. So we know he's not the most durable guy. We can talk about Ryan Fitzpatrick. Boy, I'll bet they wish they had him back, didn't they? Maybe Brian Forrest isn't so stupid after all, knowing that at least they had a good, solid insurance policy there. So, hey, I wish to a well. I really do. I don't wish anything upon head injuries. I've said it to other people before, and I'll say it to you guys. I've had head, head, head injuries. I'm still dealing with it, and it is not fun. 
Mel, I know you have to get going real quick, so I want you to let everybody know how they can get a hold of you. You can catch me on all the social media at Mel Farr Jr. and uh, about what we have going on for the youth at Mel Farr Superstar Foundation.org. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks. Guys. You got it, Mel. Mel have Good a great week. Yeah, Mel. Take, right, Take care. Good seeing you too. All right. Well, now they're down to the four of us. As we talk about Tua, any closing thoughts about Tua at all? You think we've covered it all? Yeah. yeah so I mean, he's just he's a very talented guy, but I mean, you know, and far be it for me to tell a guy what he should do with his life, but right. I think you know <clears throat> you want you want to be able to play with your kids when and your grandkids. He's still a young guy, and. I don't know. I mean, and I know how how it works. Um, you know, the, that desire burns bright. Right. But I think his family needs to talk to him. And it might be best for him in the long run to step aside. Yeah. Well, let me tell you, we're not done with this topic by any stretch of the imagination. We're just scratching the surface. And as time goes on, I think the first next checkpoint will be when he's scheduled to come off the injured list. So we'll find out there. So the thing that's, the thing that's interesting about it is this IR trip for him is it really looks like it's the opportunity for him to figure out what he wants to do. Right. And why I say that is because he traveled to Seattle. And so if he was still suffering from concussions, you know, symptoms, they wouldn't have let him on an airplane. So, right. You know, it, so clearly that wasn't the case. So him going on IR, I think, is more designed for what's the team want to do, what does he want to do, and honestly, what the le- what the league wants to do moving forward. Because if for whatever reason the doctor doesn't shut him down, which realistically probably won't, right? Then then the league has to decide: Are we making him wear a guardian cap? Right? right. Like there's there's some elements that. I think the league will ultimately get involved in during this process. And I think a lot of that has to do with why he was placed on IR as opposed to he wasn't going to be able to make it back in time. I agree with you, Bo. I think that's where we period is nothing more than just a way to buy time and look for answers to what you're trying to do. Nobody yeah. really knows what's going on. I think you're buying time. Ultimately, if you get past the four week situation, then you've figured out some things. You talk to medical people is what you've done. You find out where the symptoms are. And then you've told, spoken to your family and all that. So, and we're not even going to get into the money situation today. That'll be a topic for another day. But I, I agree. You're, they're just buying time right now to find out what's what. It's not a, I think the worst kept secret in this topic is many of us feel we know what's going to happen, but I'm not in the business to speculate at all. And I never will. I don't care if I have to wait or two, a week or two on a topic. I will not speculate. One of the biggest things I talk about. And my book here, Lessons from the Microphone, is this, okay? Let me wait. Let's get it right. And one of my favorite things in there is when I talk about Frank Reynolds, you know, during the Reagan assassination attempt, how he laid into his people there, said, I'm not looking to get it first. I'm getting it right. He blew a gasket. If you're looking for that video, all you got to do is look on YouTube. But there'll be a lot more layers of this story. But it's just interesting that when you look at all the Dolphins, you thought you had Skylar Thompson ready. What do you happen on Sunday? Yet another injury to another quarterback. And I don't think the Dolphins ever expected in their wildest dreams or nightmares that they'd be down to quarterback three and they even four. And I think they're fortunate they even got Tyler Huntley in the first place. So we'll see. We'll continue to stay on top of the story. I'll just say this. I've been in that situation. It, it, it stinks. You know, uh, in 2019, I was in Detroit and we lost Matt Stafford. And then I think – I, I can't even remember how many guys we rolled through. I mean, we we played like five different guys. It's 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 a very unenviable position to be in in the National Football League when you know you don't have a quarterback and you're just you're trying to win football games. You know, you're right. still trying. It just it makes it really really hard. You have to be your margin error margin for error goes from from slim to none in in every other phase um just because that position impacts the game so much if i recall correctly because i i think i covered a game in tampa then they get down to drew stanton on the depth chart i believe 
I don't know. I'll have to look it up, but I think they did. The Lions injury problems circulating okay. that position. But, yeah, we'll have to figure it out. It's not a big deal. All right, well, let's go on to something a little bit easier, and that's the United Football League. A total of 137 players from the UFL spring football have been on NFL rosters. So with that said, Steve, what are your thoughts about the United Football League? Is it doing its job? I think that speaks for itself, right? I mean, right. you you got all these guys, you know, that some of them had had – Maybe a short career in the NFL, a right. cup of coffee up there. But the fact that the, the league is churning out these guys who are on rosters now, I think that's great for the NFL, and it's great for the players because uh, they can show that maybe they weren't in a right fit the first time they had a shot at something, and now they're able to show what they got. And, and I think NFL teams seem much more – um, welcoming to these guys than maybe they were, you know, a generation ago when they had different leagues. Yeah, I think the best thing that happened was when the USFL and the XFL did merge and they have two separate conferences to keep all the talent together. But Coach Bono, obviously, you see what the league has done. 137 guys got more reps, didn't they? And now we see the number. And that's that's really what it boils down to. You know, you you talk in scouting, you always talk about or even coaching. Anytime you're evaluating players, you talk about making evidence based decisions. You know, what do you see on tape? And so anytime a player has opp opportunity to add to his his playing resume, which his resume is his game tape, then that's that can only help the player um, and it helps everybody it helps those scouts who are trying to, you know, project, right. It's still not the NFL, but it's a step closer to the NFL than maybe college football, especially, you know, no one's saying that the power fives or the Southeast conference has the, the corners, the market on NFL talent, you know, NFL talent comes from, from every level of football. You know, so it, it, is, it is remarkable how really, truly no stone goes unturned when it comes to scouting. And, you know, those college scouting scouts, they get to they visit every single school. I mean, that has football They're They're going to get somebody in the building to get eyes on every potential prospect because you just never know when the next guy where the next guy is coming from. Well, you know, it's interesting how you say that, coach, because you know what? Ken Wisenhunt has been hired by the Memphis Showboats as a new head coach, and he'll start next year. I know Ken Wisenhunt. Is who, who left? Who left? The, who did they get rid of? I can't remember. I just know Ken Wisenhunt's a new guy, and yeah. you know what? Ken Wisenhunt is a proven coach in this league. So. Oh yeah, he's yeah, he he is. Is. I, in fact, he was. I think he actually coached the Titans. For that, time. Look, that, yes, he did. He did. I mean, that league does has no shortage of like n name, uh, you know, right. recognition. There's a lot of you know. Look, yeah. look at the guys that are coaching in that league. You know, they're all guys that have had success at uh, in either in the NFL or major college level. Yeah, Wade Phillips did a good job getting the list and list there. So, Bo, what do you think about the job the UFL has done? I mean, it, it's fantastic because, it, again, there's a, a lot of guys that probably have the talent to get to the NFL. That college just wasn't quite long enough for them to get enough reps to be to that to to be to a spot where you know they can get up there. And the worst thing about football is, like, when you get to that spot, if you're not ready right then, it's just over. Right. So it's uh, it's it's a weird way that football ends. And so it, it's nice for these players to be able to have another way to continue on because, you know, arena leagues don't really get looked at quite the same. You know, will they get looked at? Sure. But I mean, it, it's pretty rare. Um, you know, the CFL or any of the European leagues, I mean, again, eyes are on them, but it's not viewed quite the same. So having something domestically that, uh, you know, they can get eyes on easier. It, it, it's great for the players. It's great for the teams. Yeah, the you know, Scott, uh, Scott Bo brings up a great point because if you think about it, like, you know, baseball's got the minor leagues, right? right. Uh, basketball's got the G League, plus they've got the European leagues, all that stuff. Hockey's, 
hockey's got a million levels to it, right? Uh, football doesn't have that. So, you know, Bo's exactly right. It's like right. when you're done, when they say you're done, there's nowhere, you know, there's nowhere else you can go to, to build on that, that resume. So, yeah, well, there, well, there have been so many spring leagues that have tried and failed, but this one's got money behind it between the networks. And uh, one of the things I worked in the original USFL covering some teams here. And, you know, you can't compete with the NFL during the spring, number one, which Donald Trump tried to do. And we'll leave it at that. But and John Bassett wasn't strong enough because, unfortunately, the man was dying of cancer. He wasn't able to fight what was going on. But so many have tried and failed. But when you got money behind you with the networks and they love the spring void that they can fill in their program, boy, you got a much better chance to do it. Then you can mess around with the rule changes. This has been great for pro football. NFL. I don't think with the Canadian Football League, you can gauge it enough. You got to two downs and then punt, do whatever you're going to do. So you're not playing with essentially the same rules, especially on downs. I tried so hard. I really did during the offseason to watch it. I couldn't even make it through a half. I really did. <laughs> the Arena Football League, y'all, you got a half a field. So, but I love those goalposts. If you can go ahead and bullseye through them, then maybe they might look at you if you're a kicker. After all, I got a special team guy on there, right? Don't I? So, I mean, yeah, but yeah, this is great. And 137, and it'll, the number will get bigger and bigger. And I'll be interesting to see when the time comes that they start to expand a little bit more because it's inevitable they're going to expand. But they want to make sure that the markets that they have are solid and then they'll be able to make the move. Yeah, I like Orlando Escribano, what he says. Try watching cricket. I don't know anything about the sport, so I'll have to take your word for it. You and, know, there, there is one thing that is unique uh, this time around with the – you know, the UFL is the NFL is so established at this point, whereas before they tried to kill anything that even competed in the same realm. This time around, the NFL is like, oh, let's try stuff out in this league as opposed to we're trying to be the only thing that is football. Now, if you if remember, the, the, the NFL sued the USFL mm -hmm. way back then and and. I mean, I think they uh, settled for one dollar. The, the USFL won. They filed like, or, or, or what was the other way that we're around? I think the USFL tried to sue right. uh, the NFL and won, won one dollar. But uh, yeah, th I'd say that's the other thing is they kind of know their place. I'm talking. They haven't, um, you know, when it comes to the finances, I think they've been more responsible in terms of under. You know, they're basically not overextending themselves and they built a model that it appears that they'll be able to sustain. Well, number one, well, here, number one coach, it was a $3 settlement that got reduced to $1. Now I wonder what that $1 bill would be for on the memorabilia market. Uh, yeah. Trump changing three games. So you know, let me tell you, Orlando, I lived the in check, the checks in the hall of fame. It's well, in was the it really? The check is in the pro football hall of fame. Oh, there you go. For those of you who have a digital camera, which everybody does nowadays, take a picture of a piece of history for the most interesting reason on the planet. I'm not getting into the guy that got involved because I don't want to get hammered in social media anywhere because it's something I should keep my mouth shut about. Steve, <laughs> and that doesn't happen easy. I know Steve laughs at me every time I attempt to keep my mouth shut. It just isn't easy. Yeah, it doesn't work. <laughs> no, it doesn't work. Hey, but you know what? The UFL is doing its job. I guess that's the main thing. Well, you know, you know it's it's funny because uh, uh, Bo said something that jogged my memory, um, you know, about players not being ready. And I, I remember sitting in the room, Belichick talking about, you know, um, you know, some guys reach their peak in college and some guys don't. And, you know, he said some guys might not be, reaching their peak as a player. I'm kind of paraphrasing here, but That's okay. you know, until a couple of years later. And, you know, he said, we always try to identify guys because there's not much leeway and uh, that might not be ready, but we know we're going to hold on to them and put them on a practice squad because we think this guy's going to develop slower. Right. And, you know, the USFL is helping all the teams with that now because yeah, some right. guys might not have, you know, uh, got a fair shake in college or 
you know, their team needed him to play out of position because they were short somewhere else and it hurt their draft stock. So excellent, excellent point all the way around. Okay. Well, this is the point of the show that Mr. Bono has an opportunity to do a little ranting and for <laughs> North Florida State University people that want to listen to Coach Bono, let me set the stage for Coach. Number one, okay, FSU had a four-game losing streak, okay, and it actually won a game, barely defeated California 14-9. to nine. Now, I know Coach Bono is the biggest Florida State University fan on the planet, not, but if you haven't heard him rant before, Steve, I'm setting this guy up to continue to follow up on his Florida State thing if he wants to do it because he's made himself a folk hero in Tallahassee. <laughs> Well, look, they won this week. So, I mean, that's you, – you can't really pile on somebody that, when they won. Yeah, you know, but I wanted you on last week. You couldn't make it, so if they're, it was dig, last if, they're, week. if they're digging themselves out, they still got a long way to go. Um, no. You know, I think, uh, honestly, you know, I wish I had the clip and had all of the quotes, but but Nick Saban kind of blast, put them on blast this weekend. You know. Oh, Saban was talking about Florida and Florida State and just kind of how, uh, you know, Florida as much he said, it's not always, you know, you know, uh, it's probably not all Billy Napier's. He says how many he just pointed out to how many coaches that they've had uh, since like Urban Meyer when they didn't invest in the facilities after Urban Meyer when really they had their their opportunity. And then, you know, Florida State, he, his knock on them was, you know, how can you develop a culture when you're building your team through the transfer portal? It's a, it's one of the things that happens in your role in the dice, you know, when you do that, because you don't know how those kids are going to react. And, and especially when things get tough and you hit a blimp, you know, you hit a bump in the road. I mean, look, Jay Norvell is a quality football coach. He's proven that over the course of his year of his right. career. But, you know, obviously there have been some decisions uh, made. You know, they're not playing up to the standard. And when you're the head coach, you bear the response, you know, you bear the weight of that responsibility. And there's no, you know, there is no excuses for it. And there's, there's probably reasons, but I tell you what, the people that are donating to that program that are putting their sweat equity and their hard-earned money in backing it, they're doing it to watch them win. They want them to win. They don't want to just see them play. And so they've still, you know, there's, you know, I wish I knew more about what was going on in that building and what's going on there, but there's clearly, you know, there's clearly issues and, you know, they better get it figured out quickly. That's all I could say. Yeah. If I'd have had you on last week, I know you were a little under the weather. I have a feeling the rant would have been more effective, but you know what? <laughs> the reason why I tried to make it somewhat effective is they barely squeaked by California 14 yeah, yeah. Exactly. You know. So that's okay, Coach. First of all, the, the one thing I have to tell everybody, Steve, obviously you're back, and Bo and Mel, but everybody's getting so used to Coach Bono when he first started with this program was reserved as you can be, but as time goes on over the last <laughs> year working with us here, this guy becoming more and more open, and he's developed, and now he has a rant that guy began. He's developed a group chat with us. This guy is really coming to the other side. I am so proud of Coach Bono. Okay. Still, and, you know, still, we still keep it classy, though, don't we, Scott? No, we do. We do. <laughs> hey, listen. Coach Bono is the only one on the planet that could have talked me into getting merchandise, which we did because we love the guy. <laughs> and hopefully we'll make some money off it before long. I don't care. I love doing it. That's where he yeah, If you're watching the show, for crying out loud, buy a T-shirt from Scott. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. All of you guys, all you guys in the chat room that are on here every week, we love you. Just, I mean, buy yeah. yourself, buy, buy a T-shirt, buy a hat, you know. Yeah. Hey, hey, listen, Coach Bono's becoming a celebrity. I see him getting invited on a lot more shows. He started with us, and he has his own with Bo every Wednesday. What is it, at 4 Eastern time, I think, Four something time. like that? Yep. And then, of course, I think it was on some other one with Linda McGrath or whatever that lady was. or somebody. Uh, there. On, he was on with Mac, yeah. Yeah, all right, so look at this guy. He's graduating. He, here's a guy, folks, that's a cancer survivor, and he's in the book not only because of that but a lot of other things. And this guy is a motivation to everybody. Steve, you know, I think you and I, we've taken our lumps too. But this guy is an inspiration. So if he tells you to buy some stuff from us, don't argue with us. Yeah, I'm, I'm talking to everybody in the tech chat room. Please go to go visit go visit Scott's website. 
click on the you know shop deal and redirect you to his team store and pick something out it's not overpriced either i think there's a i, I think you're running like a 20 percent discount right now if i not yeah, mistaken. For sure okay they'll get to that in a moment look who's back my friend tanya scope dc she did hanging in there all day watching it man i'm wait till i bring her on one of these days i'm gonna bring her on a show with this group here and if she ever wants to come on with us guys and talk football injuries we'll bring her on time is a class act anyways but what a show tonight the re reunited and reunion of steve ballastari so steve real quickly before we get ready to wrap this puppy up what are your thoughts about your return has this show changed a little bit oh yeah yeah it's changed it's uh it's evolved and uh it's it's great to be back um uh, you know we had a bunch of stuff going on as you were aware of and things are starting to calm down around here a little bit. So I'm able to, to get out a little bit more. Um, but it's super to be back. I missed you, my friend. Oh, I missed you, man. Hey, t Lowe's, where you been? UCF is the king of Florida, which you should know, Orlando, being as your name is Orlando. Let me tell you, Miami, <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, I'm not going against my canes. d Lowe's, I got to tell you, I got a thoroughbred with Steve. And, of course, we all know that Coach Bono, Bo, and Mel are thoroughbreds. And Travis Holmes, when he does get on here a couple times a month. So we appreciate all the kind words in the chat room. And when I talk about a dream team, I've got it in front of me. I have one that just left at nine. And of course, another one, Travis Holmes, comes on on the alternate weeks. And wherever else we decide to bring in from time to time. Once in a while, we bring on Smoke and Jeremy B. But, you know, he's he's all over. <laughs> but, I, you know, he's a character in his own right for sure. So and, was, uh, what, was Travis just ducking us because the, the Jags are 0-3? Oh, that yeah. That's oh, it. No. <laughs> well, actually, what I decided to do is I'm going to wait for next week so that he can try to answer to what is going on up there. I think, well, he's, he's, still, I think he's still hung over from trying to drown out his sor sorrows. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> Did he get busy over this weekend? I don't even know. But the, well, let me tell you something, folks, and, and trying to keep it serious for just a moment if I'm capable of doing. Everything we've talked about tonight, and, and uh, everything from Malik Willis to Brett Favre, this is all part of football and part of life is what it is. And uh, two of the topics, or three of them, involve injuries as well. But you know what? Let's not lose sight of the fact that football is a very dangerous sport, and head injuries are a part of it. You know, Brett Favre, I don't know what else to say. I can say he's my all-time favorite quarterback. I'm happy with Malik Willis. And Tua, I, all I can say is I wish you well. It's not an easy situation to be in where you're at. So that does it on my end. So, Candy, you know, go ahead and take us home. Okay. You are listening to the South Florida Tribune YouTube channel. If you see that red subscribe button, that means you have not subscribed yet. I do not know why. You should get all notifications when we go live. Monday nights we talk hockey and then we talk baseball. Tuesday nights we talk football. Wednesday and Thursday nights, you got to tune in to find out what we're talking about because you never know. It could be anything from football to basketball to hot dog eating contest. Tune in to find out. We also stream all of our stuff on our podcast. So wherever you get a podcast, you'll be able to catch ours. You can go to our website, www.SouthFloridaTribune.com. Link to our store that Coach Bono so graciously helped us and started to try and advertise for us as well. Go pick out some, I don't know, sweatshirt, t-shirt, baseball cap, you name it. Go pick one out. You can also read Scott's articles, my pictures, all kinds of other interesting things. If you, I mean, if you're listening to this show tonight, you're listening. You like football, so we get the the transcripts from the Dolphins, the Jaguars, and the Lions. So go check it out. We also get college football information from the Gators, Florida State, USF, Miami Hurricanes, and FAU. So go check it out. The South Florida Tribune published a book last November called Lessons from the Microphone, Tuning into the Enduring Wisdom of Visionary Leaders. It is written by your host, Scott, the Motor City Madmouth Morgan Roth. It's available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Kindle, Apple, and Google Books. If you want to advertise or sponsor any one of our shows or all of our shows, call Scott, 954 
304-494-4941. Back to you, Scott. All right. Well done, Candy. As always, with that said, let's go ahead and everybody, let everybody know they can almost start off with Bo. Yeah. So you can uh, find me here every Tuesday. Uh, obviously, uh, Coach and I on Wednesdays at 4 Eastern. And you can find me on my channel right there on the screen at Football Dash Talk. Roku TV five days a week. And, of course, we have you on Tuesday night. Thankful to do that. All right. Coach Bono, you have the easiest social media, so go yep. ahead. Find me on LinkedIn. You can find me in uh, maybe your local high school stadium on a Friday night. Uh, otherwise, you can find us here on Tuesdays. And then, as Bo mentioned, with Bo on Coach's Corner on Wednesdays. Thanks there for having me. Oh, you're welcome. We love having you guys, man. Hey, Everybody. Hey, Candy, we got to work on the link that uh, – uh, on the website, we need to make that more prominent. If anybody's watching, you have to look for it. You got to scroll down and click on the the, the link. But we got to get that moved up and uh, more up front and center, Candy. So okay. I'll, so these yeah. people are trying to – and you got to unlock – I was trying to post the link to the store in, in the chat. It wouldn't let me. I don't know why. Hmm. Okay. Good to know. All right. Well, that said, Steve, why don't you let everybody know how they can get a hold of you. Once again, we're ecstatic to have you back. Yeah, I'm on LinkedIn, Steve Valsheri, Facebook, uh, Twitter, at SteveB7SFG. I write for PatsFans.com. I do a podcast with Derek Havens. We've been doing it for 13 years. Uh, we have a show coming up tomorrow. So, uh, you know, we'll be talking about the nightmare that's coming because the Patriots travel to San Francisco this weekend, and I have the feeling it's going to get ugly early. <laughs> you think? All right. Well, once again, I want to shout out to everybody in the chat room. Tanya Scotese has been unbelievable tonight. Then again, I get to see her next Wednesday. So, and as well as all the other individuals that were in the chat room, Feather Freebird, to Joshua Dora, who was on earlier, and the rest. So, I want to thank everybody's participation in the chat room. This does conclude this edition of Inside the Fix In on behalf of Mel Farr Jr., Bo Crouch. Coach Bono, Steve Ballesteri, welcome back. This, my name is Scott Morgan, Rock Motor City Man. Well, thank you for joining us on this edition of Inside the Picton. We'll be back next Tuesday night. Good night, everybody, and have a great week.